Back in March of 2017, one of the highest praised games of all time was released, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Originally slated to be the swan song for the Wii U, it released alongside the launch of the Nintendo Switch. The game sold incredibly well, selling over 20 million units to this day. It got nearly perfect scores from just about everyone I can think of, and will go down in history as one of the greatest games ever made. It had dynamic weather systems and effects, a vast open world to explore that has levels of interaction actions never seen before, a timeless pseudo cell shaded art style, a great impactful soundtrack, memorable characters, and possibly one of the better storylines seen in a Zelda game. So what did I think of it? I don't know, it was kind of boring to me if I'm being honest. Don't get me wrong though, I understand why Breath of the Wild is so highly praised, but from a pure gameplay standpoint, the game to me personally just had a lot of gameplay quirks that didn't really vibe with me, so I haven't touched it since release. I think it's pretty obvious as to why I'm talking about Breath of the Wild in this video because unless you have literally been living under a rock the past year or so since Genshin Impact was revealed, this game nearly copies Breath of the Wild's fundamentals to a T. But when you think about it, is it really bad to draw inspiration from literally one of the greatest games of all time? Within the MMORPG space, just about every game that came out in the late 2000s called itself the WoW Killer, taking gameplay aspects from World of Warcraft and trying to make them better or put their own spin on it. Hell, even WoW itself is an inspiration of MMORPGs like EverQuest and Ultima Online, taking gameplay features from those games and refining them. So what makes Genshin Impact so different from Breath of the Wild. Well, for one, it gets rid of the stinking breakable weapons. Free! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! <laughs> All jokes aside, Genshin Impact is a more RPG-focused game with many of the same elements as Breath of the Wild, but with its own features, including multiplayer. Genshin Impact has actually been a weird topic since a lot of YouTubers I've seen are covering this game like it's an MMORPG. Well, I'll be the first to say it's definitely not a massively multiplayer online game. It's simply an online co-op RPG, an MORPG if you will. You guys definitely made sure I'd never Never make that mistake again, like I did with Dauntless. I get it, okay? But the game is a live service, meaning it will have content added to it over time. It has a cash shop where you can purchase items with real money, and the big kicker as well is that it's actually a free-to-play game. So because the game is pretty much a Breath of the Wild clone, it's free, and it has multiplayer, naturally it shot up super high in popularity, having over 90,000 viewers on Twitch. After playing it for the past week, or so, I'm here to share my experiences with the game and ultimately answer for you should you play Genshin Impact. Let's get into it. Genshin Impact is a free-to-play open-world action role-playing game published by MiHoYo. The company is mainly known for their sister title, Honkai Impact, which plays similarly to Genshin Impact in terms of the combat system. The story of Genshin Impact takes place in a world called Teyvat. You play as one of the twin characters that you choose within the game's opening cutscene, who is simply known as the Traveler. The Traveler's twin is captured by the mysterious godlike woman that you fight in the beginning, while she steals your powers. Sometime later, the Traveler meets Paimon, who becomes friends with the Traveler and promises to help the Traveler find the missing twin. In the meantime, the Traveler and Paimon meets various individuals from the Knights of Favonius and learns that people within this world have something called a vision, which allows that person to control the elements and cast magical spells. The Knights find the Traveler to be something special, as they can control elements without a vision and even use the Statue of the Gods to perform other magical abilities which normal people can't do, possibly hinting that the Traveler has a a mysterious connection to the ancient gods. The central story of Genshin Impact is actually quite interesting, even if it doesn't take a large focus of the gameplay to an extent as the player is never forced to actually play the storyline if they don't want to. Similar to most open world games, Genshin Impact gives you a major storyline quest to follow, but you can choose to completely ignore it and instead do all the tons of side content the game gives you. See what you can do on your own. The best I can say is good luck. 
If you make it back alive, we'll be waiting for you. Um, you probably should ignore that. Combat in Genshin Impact is fast paced and real time with actions boiling down to your attack button, spell button, dodge, and special attack. Most combat situations will have you mixing your attacks with your spells since your spells elements can cause different effects within combat, which absolutely needs to be taken advantage of, especially when fighting against the more difficult monsters. Things like mixing a character's ice spells within a certain area that has water will cause enemies that are wet or water elements to become frozen. On the flip side, monsters that are wets are also more susceptible to being electrocuted, but so are your characters. The element system has a surprisingly large amount of depth and can be a bit much to remember which elements mix well at first, but eventually you will be swapping between each of your four characters in combat to take advantage of each of their chosen elements. Dodging or running in combat provides your character with invincibility frames within the first second or so of the running animation, so learning to dodge attacks is something that will come naturally. Finally, you have each character's special special signature attack, which is also tuned to that character's assigned element, which builds up over time by attacking. Like Honkai Impact, you have a group of characters that you can switch to at any time. This game has a party selection of four at a time, with more characters being earnable or purchased, but only four can be active at one time, unless you swap out characters for others. Depending on your character and weapon type, your attacks can also be melee or ranged. Weapons like swords, claymores, and pole arms are your melee weapons, and bows and catalysts make your ranged weapons. So in total, there is a lot to the game's combat, since you can have a wide variety of different combat situations, depending on your character's elements, weapon types, and special attacks, making it probably one of the more fun combat systems I've played. As I mentioned earlier, you can play as multiple characters. Through the storyline, you will earn various characters, but you can also earn characters through the game's cash shop gotcha system called The Wish. More on that in a bit. All the characters feel distinctly different, and fun to use, with each character most likely suiting to a different person out there. Personally, I like a quick, fast-paced character, so the Traveler is my go-to, but other players may like the slower, more powerful gameplay style of, say, Razor or Noel. Progression in Genshin Impact has several different avenues. First, there is your Adventure Rank, which is more or less your overall account level. This level will unlock more features and gameplay elements as you level it. Next is your Individual Character Level. Each character you have unlocked has their own experience level, which is increased through either defeating monsters or using the character experience materials. The character experience materials Hero's Wit, Adventurer's Experience, and Wanderer's Advice drop pretty frequently from chests you will find while exploring or from monsters you fight, more specifically boss monsters. Keep in mind though, each character has to be ascended to get past specific levels at certain intervals, basically like a mobile game will do to gate a player's progress. That too your characters also have talents in constellation charts that unlock different perks when you compile the listed resource items needed to unlock them. The last two forms of progression come from your character's equipment, which is their weapon and then artifacts. Your equipped weapons and artifacts can also level up based on the items you feed them, with weapons also needing ascension at certain level intervals, with artifacts having a max level based on their rarity. Technically, there is one last form of progression in the companionship levels that you earn with your other characters. The Traveler can can accumulate companionship experience from doing certain activities and each companionship level unlocks a storyline quest for that character for you to play that gives a bit more backstory for them. For instance, Lisa, the anime character who constantly flirts with the main character and wants to fuck him. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> yeah, is a librarian for the Knights of Favonius. You learn through some of her storyline quests that she takes knowledge seriously and can actually be a bit of a dominatrix in her personality. Besides combat and Genshin Impact, you will be doing a number of different activities to help grow your adventure rank. Exploration is one of the major focuses in the game as you will find tons of resources needed for crafting, cooking, leveling up, and questing. Chests found while exploring will reward adventure experience depending on the quality of the chest, with many of them requiring a quest or task being completed to open them. You may also find items called oculi orbs that you can use to offer to the goddess statues that will increase your stamina with some of these orbs being pretty tricky to get. Quests in Genshin are probably some of the best ways to increase your adventure rank since typically completing a quest will reward you with a hefty amount of adventure experience and potentially unlock something for you upon completion. At a certain adventure rank, you will also unlock another activity which is great 
site for adventure experience called Ley Lines. Ley Lines are certain events around the map that will task you with defeating a certain amount of enemies and will reward you with some adventure experience, but only if you have enough resin to claim the reward. Resin is essentially a currency that replenishes over time that allows you to complete these Ley Lines as well as do dungeons and fight elite bosses. Without any resin, you won't be able to claim any loot. This actually kind of sucks, but I can see why MiHoYo designed these activities this way. They essentially don't want you growing in rank too fast, so they gate those activities behind a currency you have to wait for, unfortunately. Now, you can get more resin using items that restore it, or by buying it using some premium currency, but we will get to all of that in the cash shop section. Crafting and cooking require resources that you can gather while adventuring out in the wilds. Unfortunately, both are pretty simple features, since crafting just boils down to a time-gated mechanic, and cooking is an incredibly easy minigame. Although you can technically master each dish you cook, unlocking the ability to skip the minigame altogether if you want to. Other activities include the Adventurer's Handbook, which gives a list of menial tasks to do to unlock rewards, give daily tasks that give a hefty boost in adventure rank, and lastly, it can point out boss creatures or events. Achievements are also tasks that you can check off while playing the game that reward a currency called Primo Gems and other cosmetic rewards such as nameplates. Some quests or minigames will also have you playing with the game's wing item that allows you to glide through the air, so in total, there is a ton of content here to experience. Not to mention there is multiplayer in this game with the feature being completely cross-play compatible with all platforms. Unfortunately, the PS4 version of the game does not allow you to cross your account over to PC, mobile, and the future Nintendo Switch version, but the PC and mobile versions are cross-save compatible. However, co-op isn't really all that great, unfortunately. While it is cool that you can bring a friend to play the game with you, there really isn't much incentive for players to play together. The host gets all the progression, meaning co-op players can't open chests or progress in any quests they help with. The biggest activity to take part in together with friends are the dungeons and boss monsters since that loot is shared. Even the Spiral Abyss, which is essentially this game's major dungeon with lots of challenges and floors, is a strictly solo experience, so the multiplayer concept in Genshin Impact feels like an afterthought rather than a fully fleshed out feature right now. Technically, though, the developers did say that they do not intend for this game to be a major multiplayer experience, but rather a fully fleshed out single player game with the ability to play co-op. So while they do want to improve multiplayer stability and features down the line, it was never their focus. This probably also means there will never be any form of player versus player either. Sorry, competitive players. Genshin Impact's aesthetics also take a page from the style that Breath of the Wild used, which is a pseudo cell shaded look with a more anime inspired flair here. Characters will have a very stylized look and the environments look absolutely gorgeous. It's all enhanced even more by the game's amazing soundtrack, which all just gives a feeling of adventure. Personally, one of my favorite tracks is the battle theme that plays in the beginning area. Have a listen. Lastly, let's talk about this game's monetization. While Genshin Impact is completely free to play in all of its content, there is premium services and items. First is the Cash Shop, which sells things like a monthly subscription that gives premium currency in the form of Primo Gems and Crystals. Primo Gems can be earned either through exchanging crystals you buy in the Cash Shop or simply by playing the game, albeit at a pretty slow pace. Crystals can be purchased from the Cash Shop, and these allow you to purchase some supplies like character enhancement materials or gold. Crystals can also be exchanged for Primo Gems at a 1 to 1 ratio. Primo Gems can be spent on items called Intertwined Fate and Acquaint Fate, which is used for the gotcha system. Lastly, the other two currencies called Star Glitter and Star Dust are also earned from the gotcha system randomly when you get items from it. The Star Glitter and Star Dust are essentially a currency that is given to the player so they can choose items they want rather than hoping they get it from the random slot machine called the Wish System. Speaking of that, let's talk about the Wish. Wishing is 
in this game is this game's slot machine mechanic that you will usually see in mobile games, since more or less, this game is structured to be like a mobile game. The fate items I talked about earlier are spent here to pull the slot machine and get a random item. Most of the time you will get weapons, but this is also where you can get new characters to play as with different specific rarities. Obviously, the better the character, the harder it is to get. This would normally invoke thoughts of pay to win, but honestly, I have not felt the need to spend any money on this game simply because there is literally no competitiveness to it, and rather the only reason I would spend money on it is just if I want to get tons of weapons and characters faster. Now this is definitely subject to change, as this company is known to be pretty aggressive with their monetization, but at least the wish system in its current form is fairly harmless. Lastly is the battle pass, which more or less works the same exact way it does in other games. Once you get to adventure rank 20, the battle pass will unlock. You can progress the battle pass by doing random tasks, the pass gives you or by spending primo gems, costing 150 primo gems per level, up to the cap of 50. There is also a premium track that you can purchase which costs around 20 bucks, so if you want to earn everything from the battle pass, which lasts around a month and a half or so, you will need to spend some money. Also keep in mind, it does reset after its season, so if you come in late during a battle pass season, the only way to complete the whole thing is to spend some money. So in total, there is quite a bit of monetization here, but overall it's just giving you resources, or at worst, cosmetics, so it's not anything predatory, at least not yet. In summary everyone, Genshin Impact feels like an amazing AAA title. It has tons of polish and development behind it, and it's all shockingly for free. The gameplay is fun, the world is beautiful, and the music is thematic. The cash shop is something to keep an eye on for sure, but overall I've had a blast playing this game, and I'm sure I'm not even covering everything this game has to offer, but I think at this point it's time to give my overall thoughts. Genshin Impact has a great great action combat system with a lot of depth behind it with party customization and elements. Each player can have a lot of different scenarios play out depending on their character choices, so combat never feels stale. It's clear that there was a pretty big budget behind this title since it has a ton of polish to it. I found basically zero glitches or bugs while playing it, which is a lot more than I can say about most free-to-play titles out there. Oh yeah, speaking of the game, it's completely free-to-play on multiple platforms with cross-play available for the multiplayer, with some platforms even offering cross-save, so if you play on the PC and need to head out for the day, you can just pick it back up on your phone, which is such a great feature. The game has a great art style with musical score thanks to Yu Peng Shen. The graphics are essentially timeless with its cel-shaded look, and the music, as I stated before, fits the game so perfectly. For a live service title, the game has a ton of content to experience, and even more coming in the future, so expect a lot of support from the developers for years to come on this title. Lastly, the game is pretty generous with its current premium currencies and services, so at least for now, the cash shop and monetization is pretty fair. While multiplayer is something that is available for Genshin Impact, it's pretty bland for what it offers. Multiplayer content is pretty thin, and really, at least currently, there is little incentive to even play co-op with friends, which is a bit of a disappointment. This is something miHoYo can improve, but it begs this question. Why isn't this game just a single player title. Which brings me to my next point. Since the game is a live service title, this means that you will constantly need an internet connection to even play the game. If your internet goes out at home, or if you have no service on your cell phone, you can't play the game unfortunately. While I did state that the cash shop is fair in its monetization, there could eventually be more aggressive tactics implemented in the future, so be smart with your wallet. Personally, I find that if I'm playing a free game a lot, I will throw a couple bucks here and there, but there are horror stories out there of people spending thousands and thousands of dollars on random slot machine mechanics seen in these types of games. Lastly, while this is more or less a good thing, some might see this as a shameless Breath of the Wild clone. Personally, I think it does enough to completely set itself from the Zelda game it took inspiration from, others may not be able to see past its own strengths and see it as nothing more than a shameless ripoff. Well, ladies and gents, there you have it. Just about everything you would need to know about this game, as well as my opinions. The game is a lot of fun, and I still can't believe it's completely free. Hopefully in the future, the developers implement some more multiplayer features, as I would genuinely like to see content like bigger, more fleshed out dungeons, maybe raids, or even some form of PvP content like races and minigames. Also, for those unaware, there are some promotional codes that give you some goodies if you redeem the code on the website. Redeeming the code 
code will give you 60 Primo gems and 10,000 gold. The codes are on the screen right now, so head on over to redeem them. Just keep in mind, depending on when you are watching this video, they may not work anymore, and the codes are specific to which region you are playing. For those watching who made it this far into the video, are you playing Genshin Impact? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear everyone else's experience with this game. Anyways, if you like this video and want to support my content, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to follow me on my social media, the links to those are down in the description. Finally, thanks everyone for watching the video, and I will see you next time.